Okay, uh, welcome everybody once again to the Worship Ministry course. Uh, today we have a guest lecture. <laughs> um, Pastor Jakes will be taking us through the last couple of chapters uh, in the course. Um, so Pastor Jakes, over to you. Thanks, Roshan. Hey, feel free to just uh, jump in whenever you want to and share your thoughts. Also. Sure, sure. Yeah, yes. yeah, okay, okay. Okay, let's, uh, we'll pray and then get started. Okay. Father, we, we just want to thank you for the privilege that you've given us to look up to you each and every moment, every day, God. And we thank you for the privilege of calling you Abba Father. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of uh, being able to come to your presence and to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Father, we thank you that, um, yeah, God, whenever we encounter you, our hearts just respond in worship. We cannot help but be in awe of you. Lord, what, what we see in you, God, who you are and how you deal with each one of us and what you do, oh God, in our lives. Master, we, yes, Lord, we cannot help but just respond in praise and thanksgiving and um, just to be in awe of you, Master. Yes, Lord, we, we worship you. We worship you. Yes, Lord, our hearts are just drawn to you, drawn to your presence, God. We thank you that there is truly no one like you. And we thank you that uh, you make yourself available to each one of us. All of you, God, you make yourself available for all of us, God, for all of me, God. We thank you. I thank you, Lord. And uh, yes, Lord, we, we just commit this time into your mighty hands. And we pray that you would speak to us through your word. And uh, I pray that... Um, Lord, there'll be a deposit of your word in our hearts, even as we go through these sessions. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, thanks, Roshan. <laughs> thanks for having me on the today's lessons. Okay, so um, I think as a, as a class, we've been <clears throat> through um, the worship ministry uh, course, and we've come to the uh, you know the last few uh, last couple of chapters in, in this course, and um, and I think just before this, you've been looking at uh, uh, corporate worship, right? Uh, and and how it has changed over the years, and also the way um, the use of music, the use of technology, and everything, because it's um, the the environment has changed over the years. Um, um, well, but uh, but the Lord is the same. Right, uh, he is to be worshipped in spirit and truth, so that has uh, not changed. Even though, uh, well, the environment would have changed. Maybe the, there's a different in the in the form, and so on. Right. Um, so today um, we will uh, look at uh, 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 in continuing with corporate worship and and whatever we've been doing to facilitate corporate worship, we'll look at some of the uh, dynamics of corporate worship. And, and this is something that uh, you would have uh, already studied in the in the first, uh, very first semester in praise and worship. So it's, it's going to be a reiteration of that, right? a refreshing of that. Um, but also for us to, uh, you know, it, it helps us in several ways especially this particular topic and also the entire course itself um let like for example for some of us who are called maybe to worship ministry right it, it's it's helpful because you know okay this is uh, what i'm called to do and therefore you know here are some practical things here is the uh, you understand okay what we need to do um and maybe make some changes to what we need to do as worship ministers you know it's helpful and also why we do you know what we do sometimes we just do it because it's um, and that's that's how it is that's how we've always done right uh, culturally this is how it is in church or this is these are the things that we've been doing okay um, we start with worship and then go on to the announcements and then the message and so on so you have this you know routine thing happening so uh, but but we we also you know take a step back and look at you know why do we do this you know why do we um, you know worship and why worship ministry um, and uh, you know what can I do to facilitate um, uh, worship in the congregation and so on so it helps us in that way also um, so as worship ministers and uh, and secondly it also helps us as you know maybe we're not called for worship ministry but you know maybe we are called to plant a church or we are already 
you know, uh, overseeing a, a, a congregation or fellowship. So it helps us in that way to understand worship and to understand the, the importance and the place of worship in uh, in a corporate body, right? Um, and and not li- really. Uh, put it aside as okay. This is uh, some time of singing before the, you know, before the uh, preacher comes and shares and and so on. So you we, we get to understand the importance and also get to understand some of the uh, uh, and get to really um, you know do what it takes in order to steward and in order to uh, probably guide those in the worship ministry. Right. Um, so, as a you know spiritual leader, as maybe a senior pastor, um, you you get a firm understanding of okay, all this is there in worship ministry. Therefore, you know um, we need to give that the right place in the congregation, and uh, this will be the result or the fruit of having a, a community that is you know that is really hungry for God, that is a, a community that is really thriving and wants to worship. Right. So, how can I build that? So, as a you know, as a senior pastor, maybe, or a, you know, uh, as a church leader, uh, you also get to understand that. Or maybe you're you're not a senior pastor, but just you know, um, you're part of the congregation, or maybe you're just a, you know, you're you're called to some other area of worship. But then also you get a firm understanding of it, right? So this course has uh, hopefully helped um, you know uh, hit all those points, right? So um, yeah, so let's look. Today, let's look at uh, uh, some aspects of corporate worship. Okay, um, let me just uh, project the uh, notes. Um, so, one second. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we're in um, chapter seven, right? Um, and chapter seven is uh, how do I um, develop, you know, how do I build up the co- local community as a worshiping body? Uh, and and before we actually look into how can we practically develop, you know, our church as a worshiping community, um, it's good for us to understand what happens, you know, when we worship together. Okay. Uh, so there are certain things that happen when we worship together as a as a body. Um, uh, that doesn't happen when we worship alone, right? We need to understand the importance of that. And and the fact is that since it is God who has designed worship, since it is God who has designed corporate worship, right? So we uh, we know that there are certain things. That he's done it for a reason, and uh, there are certain things that He wants done in the body uh, when we worship. Okay, so um, so first of all, we see that in congregational worship, okay, we minister to God in the sense we we bless Him, we praise Him, we give thanks to Him, uh, we minister, we we bless the Lord, we come to give Him praise, we come to uh, to declare the truth of who He is, okay, uh, we minister to Him, right? So um, we don't come to uh, the congregation does not come to say something or do something in order to please him so that he gives me something in return right uh, or you know i say nice things about him so that he will do something good for me no that is not the intention that is not the motive at all right we come to bless him to give him thanks because he is worthy he is that Okay. So we are actually declaring truth every time we come and uh, and and praise Him and worship Him and bless Him and say, "Okay, God, uh, this is who You are, God. This is what You do, God. This is what You've done, oh God." So when we declare that truth, you know, all lies are dispelled, all lies are dispelled, all false, um, all false support systems are dispelled, right? So darkness actually. Uh, takes several steps back and, and it's just driven away because we are declaring truth as a congregation. We're declaring God. We're declaring who God is. We're blessing him. We're giving him thanks. Right? So, so that is what we do. We minister to God. And the beautiful thing is this. When we come together to minister to God and when we offer him our sacrifice of praise, when we bring in that sacrifice of praise, and as he receives it, something amazing happens and we experience his touch we experience his presence 
And as a congregation, we experience his touch and we experience his presence. Well, um, uh, he is, of course, uh, we have that, you know, talking about the presence of God, we we know that all of us have the indwelling presence of God, right? He, the minute we ex- received him as Lord and Savior, he came, he, he indwells us, he has sealed us, he has given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. We know all that. So he indwells us. And the Lord Jesus also promised his presence you know maybe i'll just put up put down that verse the promised presence that is matthew um i'm just i think it's matthew 18 and 19 and 20 um okay okay so there's the verse matthew 18 uh, the Lord Jesus saying, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Okay, so uh, the Lord has is given a promise. He's given his word saying, you know, uh, are you there? Are you there in my name? Uh, I'm going to be there. Right. So as a congregation, you know, as uh, just minimum two people, maximum uh, unlimited. So. We come, and then we are there in His name. The Lord says, "You know, I will be there." So we we experience His presence. So when He is there, you know, our, our spirits rejoice. When He is there, there is healing. When He's there, He ushers in with just by His presence, because where His presence is, there is power. There is His power. So He ushers in just by His presence uh, several things. We so. That's the that's the beautiful thing. We experience the presence of God. You know, otherwise, um, there's no difference between a gathering of people just singing songs, um, you know, uh, on on several things. Uh, what is the differentiator? The presence of God. The presence of God. So, as a congregation, we experience the presence of God. So, as maybe a you know, as a pastor, as a church leader, as a worship minister, you realize the importance of the presence of God. We cannot do anything, or ministry, or minister the word, or pray without the presence of God. Right? And He has promised, and praise God for that. Okay, He has promised. Then the other thing is also the manifest presence of God. I'm sure we've learned that also, uh, where. His presence is so tangible. Okay, let me uh, put another scripture here. Um, his presence is so tangible. Tangible meaning it's so visible, it's apparent, uh, it's it's so um, uh, it, it's so it's 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 put on display. Right, it's put on display. It's clear. His manifest presence and his manifest presence is something that we experience in our spirit. We could be experiencing in our, you know, in as our physical senses, right? What we see, it could be something that we see. It could be something that we feel, like uh, physically, maybe uh, in our hands, in our, you know, in our bodies. The manifest presence of God. Okay. Uh, when we read Second Chronicles five and uh, uh, the inauguration of the temple, I think this also we've gone through many times. But um, you know, when we look at it, we see that uh, they were all as one. They are they were praising, they were thanking God, they were lifting up their voice with trumpets and cymbals and you know instruments of music and praise the Lord. And they were saying, For he is good and his mercy endures forever. And this is what happens that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud goes on to explain what is that cloud right the cause of the cloud for the glory of the lord uh, filled the place i think uh, i didn't uh, get that last part um for the glory of the lord filled the house of god okay um so. glory of the lord filled the house of god the cloud now this also happens in uh, when, when we when the church gathers together and worships the Lord, right? So it's about the presence of God. So we experience the presence of God, and uh, you know one one thing is we as new creations, we are designed to to hunger and thirst uh, after the presence of God. Right? You realize that you know. 
people try to fill with all kinds of substitutes, right? They say, okay, in terms of identity, in terms of uh, whatever the need, deepest needs are, longings are, you have substitutes, it means something else that takes the place of it, you know, in terms of whatever, wealth or, um, you know, we, we can go after it um, and and try to substitute the longing in our hearts, you know, maybe a relationship or something, a substance, uh, an abuse of the substance, some addictions, try to replace that longing. But that longing, we are designed to be filled to experience the presence of God right? and to hunger after the presence of God. So what happens is when the congregation comes and, you know, worships and they experience the presence of God, you know, um, over and over and over again, you know, there's something that's taking place. We we find ourselves to be who we truly are. And right? we come to that place of knowing, okay, this is who I am. You know, this is what life is about. This is what, it, what eternity is about. Everything gets corrected. A lot of things get aligned, right? Okay, so we experience the presence of God. And the presence of God is uh, the atmosphere for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be released. Okay, so the gifts of the Spirit of God, uh, Holy Spirit, are released. Like we uh, read about it in 1 Corinthians 12, we read that um, list, um, you know, various gifts like tongues, interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirit, um, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, um, miracles, um, uh, uh, you know, working of miracles and gift of faith and so on. So um, this is the, the opportunity for, uh, I mean, it is the atmosphere the environment in which these gifts are released. Okay, so um, we uh, we can we can actually encourage people take a step of faith now. You're filled with the Spirit of God. Take a step of faith. Those of you who have not not yet begin begun praying in tongues, you know, take a step of faith and give voice to what you're you know hearing in your spirit. Give voice to what you're um, you know receiving from the Holy Spirit. And there are um, you know uh, God releases maybe visions. God quickens um, the Scripture, and a whole lot of things happen because um, you're experiencing the presence of God and uh, the gifts of. Uh, this Holy Spirit uh, are released as well, right? So, uh, so all this happens when we minister to God. Secondly, corporate worship, when we come together and worship, it also brings a sense of unity within the church. Okay, so very, very important. Um, we realize that we are all different people with different likes, different dislikes, different opinions. You know, uh, it, it just takes two people and uh, you you realize that you are so different right you understand that you are unique you understand that god has created you right um so uh, all these differences are there but the one common factor is that um uh, is, is the lord jesus right? the church comes together to acknowledge that jesus is lord to acknowledge that he is the savior and he is my savior as much as he is your savior right so that's the that's the common thing so if the church comes together and when we worship together and acknowledge and say lord you are my savior the other person is also saying yes lord you are my savior the other person over there you know, the one who so differs with you is saying yes lord you are also my yeah you are my savior then you realize hey we have something in common something that is much bigger than our differences Yes, he likes biryani. I don't like biryani, but you know, but we are agreeing on one thing, which is, which is this something which is much, much bigger than the temporal things of life. That, that Jesus is Lord, right? That we have uh, Him as our Lord and Savior. That He died on the cross, and and it brings a sense of unity. Now, uh, why is unity important? You know, um, if you look at the, some of the scriptures that we put earlier, um, let me just. Uh, you know, if you uh, just scroll up the chat, and if you look at Matthew chapter 18, you know, verse 19, the Lord says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Okay, so he's talking about unity. And the word there, you know, uh, agree is a uh, symphonia, which means a uh, uh, symphony, okay, from which we get the word symphony, like, um, and Phil Roshan would have explained a lot more about symphony, about the orchestra, every, everybody playing in time, the different sections and, uh, you know, um, and so on, each one doing their part. So he's saying, 
is talking about a you know he's saying come to that place of playing together come to that playing place of worshiping together come to that place of symphony and from that place of agreement you know he's saying if you agree um and you ask if two of you agree concerning anything that they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven so you will see unity is so important as a church we are we are you know we are there um not to just gather together you know worship and maybe Uh, pray and then go back listen to the word but we are there as um, you know as gatekeepers right, to say i'm going to allow this on earth i'm going to disallow this right uh, i'm there to further the kingdom of god the rule and reign of god i'm there to um, cancel out the works of the enemy right um, so we are there as warriors we are there as watchmen over the city over the you know over the over the place that god has given as authority you're saying this is what i'm you know this is what i'll allow in my family this is what i'm going to disallow in my family in my church family in in my city and i'm there and and it brings that sense of oneness unity from that place of unity we are praying those prayers we are dec- decreeing those declarations right uh, um and then you know, the lord says again he's promised just like he's promised his presence he says it will be done by my father in heaven right so uh, so no wonder you know the uh, the devil fights against uh, unity brings disunity okay uh in the in the uh, in the in the verse that we saw again uh, in chronicle second chronicles 5 uh, there also we see the same thing you know we see that uh, and it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one song to be so- one sound to be heard you know uh, so they were as one you know in agreement in one accord which we also see in the book of acts that they uh, came together as one so the lord uh, places a lot of uh, uh, weight on unity okay um that uh, it, it's not sameness you know we're all different uh, and it's the lord who's made us that way so it's not sameness it's not uniformity but it's unity right despite my likes and dislikes and all that i i come to a place of agreement right on uh, on those core things right and we see that in psalm 133 also uh, i just put that verse again um okay psalm 133 how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity verse 2 it is like precious oil um i'm talking about the anointing uh, precious oil flowing down from the head running down the beard and it is like the dew of hermon um you know dew, dew bringing about so many things so many changes uh, freshness and and you know recently we just looking at um, in one of the sermons that uh, the second year students preach they're talking about the difference between rain and dew very interesting like dew does certain things that rain cannot and rain does do some things that dew cannot and um, it was a very interesting thing to look at so it's like the dew of hermon right the anointing of god it's like the dew of hermon and and what triggers that is or what where i can have more of it is when i'm there corporately as um you know in unity right so um so there there the lord commanded the blessing okay life evermore okay so it's it's important so uh, worship brings about a sense of corporate worship brings a sense of unity okay so we see um the importance of it as a church leader as a worship minister to bring the body together uh, unitedly uh, and worship okay the third thing that we see is that <clears throat> uh when we sing together when we worship the lord together uh, the songs that we sing the declarations that we make the uh, may uh, you know the scriptures that we look at uh, enable us to first of all to learn certain things spiritual deeper spiritual truths it's another way to teach as a worship minister the, uh, the some spiritual truth about we worship uh, some reality about uh, maybe about the prophetic about the spiritual realities uh, and also you know reinforce the truth right so it means to to learn something new 
to teach something new and also to reinforce reinforce meaning you know it's already taught but then you're making it stronger right you're reinforcing it it's like you know something maybe like a concrete thing reinforced with steel you know making it stronger so that it's established so that it's it doesn't take you know it, it doesn't get blown away by the storms of life it's it's strong it's established right in the life of the believer right so what gets established the truth of god's word so it's important to um, you know uh, check what we are singing right uh, because we are we are singing it over and over again um, so uh, we better be singing what is the truth right we better be singing uh, i mean it's okay to sing what is in our you know what we are experiencing emotionally as well you know like the psalmist psalmist declares god i'm i'm sad i'm i'm you know i'm distraught uh, uh, i'm in pain and so on but but also come back to the truth and uh, um, of uh, of god you know like the psalmist again does you know why are you cast down hope in god right um so uh, uh, i will yet trust in him right so uh, it's important to declare that it's it's important to declare life it's important to declare um you know speak the truth you know and we've been uh learning about declaration right declaring the word the principles that are there in in declaring um, the truth of god's word um, so where um you know uh, uh, where we experience the power of the truth of god's word in in confession in declaring you know mountains speak to the mountain so these songs when it, when songs when that are faithful songs that are that that uh, uh, that bring about healing and hope uh it's um, it not only teaches us something there's uh, it also reinforces truth okay let's look at a couple of uh, scriptures you know which is there right there in the notes um, ephesians 5 and verse 19 i think i just need to read the verse before that ephesians 5:19 um well 518 says do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord okay so we are speaking to one another we declaring psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and and making melody in our heart to the lord i'm sure that you know there are many times when uh, a song has lifted you up right i, I remember very specifically uh, one time um i, I may have shared uh, this at um, anyway pardon me <laughs> i'm going to share this again but this was a time when i was living a dual life as a believer right i was i was a believer uh, i was uh, i was working as a sales person i was living a dual life in the sense uh, there were so many issues still left uh, you know with part of me so many addictions that were still part of me and i was living a dual life right and um, and this was a good friday service and it's a, a ch- church where now we we uh, actually to tell you the truth i went to this church because it was a shorter service <laughs> okay normally good friday service in this uh, you know in, in, in where where i was worshiping it was like a, a long service you know seven words of the cross and also i said okay let me go to a shorter service so i went to this church it was a church ag church uh, and my friend was a, you know he is a pastor's son and he was uh, he's a drummer there at that time now he's a senior pastor there so anyway so um i went to this church and we were singing uh it was a good friday uh, and uh, and we were just worshiping and there was this song um um uh, what song is that yeah uh, jesus died and rose again the till song uh huh into the waters i will go da, 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 da. okay anyway i i'm i this is the i'm sure you've heard yeah, this I'm, I'm not, it's not, <laughs> not coming the title yeah. but anyway so um you know i've sung the song so many times i think hosanna uh, Oh, hosanna. Yeah. Oh, hosanna hosanna to the lamb that was slain so there was it was a good friday service very appropriate song they were singing it and that um one phrase which caught my attention was jesus died and rose again you know we've i'm sure you know as a believer you've heard it so many times you know but we are worshiping together everybody's declaring the truth jesus died and rose again and i'm looking at that i'm looking at the powerpoint and that phrase jesus died and rose again that just hit me 
just hit me because I was living a very compromising kind of life. Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, different really different uh, you know Christian, and and you know I was I was a married person uh, and so on. But that that day, you know, it just hit me. Uh, I was weighed down by so much guilt. I was weighed down by so much of um, you know condemnation. I was I was there heavy, um, heavy in my heart. But when I saw that phrase, Jesus died and rose again, that that changed something. You know, uh, my, in my mind, it was like, okay, if he died and rose again, then he did something with that sin. He some, did something with my sin, right? He he rose again because it was, I, I knew that enough of the word to know that he rose again because he did something with it. He dealt with it. He destroyed that body of sin. Romans chapter 6, right? It was done away with. And uh, and something just lifted off me. I, that spiritual truth that we were declaring as a congregation, I, it just hit me. And God did something in me. Right? Because I was declaring the truth, because that truth was reinforced right, in the time of corporate worship. So it was not preaching. I, I don't even remember the message, what was preached that day. But I remember this because it was an encounter with truth. So just imagine, you know, there are people coming in the, uh, to the congregation, in the, in the congregation, in the church, who are, you know, weighed down by guilt, weighed down by the lies of the enemy, weighed down by addiction. And, and they're just coming for that one, uh, one thread of hope. You know, they're saying, oh, hey, amen, I can't do anything. I'm here in church. I don't know why I'm here, but um, I, I I don't know. You know, maybe I'll, I'll just go back doing the same old things, but but I'm here anyway. Uh, uh, at least let me meet my friends or whatever. You know, they're here for whatever reason. You're there for whatever reason. But when we declare the truth, and when they declare the truth, and when we see the truth for what it is, they experience the power and power of that truth. You know, that day, that guilt and shame just, you know, and I, I was able to move a little closer. God is opening my eyes. God is bringing me to that place of, you know, renewing, weeding things off my life. Right. So um, the truth that we sing enable, enables us to learn and teach and uh, reinforce spiritual truth. Okay. Um, and we, we uh, and the fourth thing is that um, uh, corporate worship also prepares our hearts and provides the very atmosphere for preaching of the word. Um, you know, uh, Hosea 10 and verse 11, a very in, uh, indirect reference. You know, this is what it says. It says, uh, Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to thresh grain, but a harness to a I will make uh, Ephraim pull a plow. Judah shall plow. Jacob shall break his clods. You know, Judah referring to praise. Um, and the praise of our God and uh, Judah shall plow. You know, there is a plowing that happens. There is a tilling of the ground that happens uh, when, there's, when there's praise, when there's worship. Right? There is a preparation of the heart that happens. Uh, a heart that is hardened, that, that, can, that is not suited for uh, agriculture, that nothing can be cultivated. Uh, it it comes to a place of having loose soil where the seed can be sown and uh, and th when there's rain on it when the when the land when the field is watered you know it brings forth what the seed is supposed to bring forth right but it is sown in that loose soil a, a land that is tilled um, a soil that is a land a, a ground that is broken right um which was previously maybe hardened, unsuitable, um, you know, to produce anything. But now it becomes, it it becomes softened, right? It, it's it's ready, and that happens during the time of uh, worship, um, when people's hearts are softened. Um, you know, in church, you know, normally people come with the, you know, as a we forget sometimes, you know, as. Uh, as a ministry team or, uh, you know, people who are, maybe you might be serving in prayer, serving in, wor serving in worship, and then we go prepared, right? You know, maybe during the week, there's something happening, uh, you know, the, 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 you prepare the songs, you prepare the uh, for the practice, and, you, and that morning also you're preparing and saying, God, you know, you speak. So you we go prepared. Not everybody comes prepared. 
okay um once i remember just going to church and i see this uh, uh, see this car parked by the side the, the 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 there's a lady who's stopped out you know stepped out of the car there's a little one who's uh, throwing up <laughs> by the side okay and they looked all dressed up and i was pretty sure that they were going to church okay so uh, that is happening and i'm sure they must have been washing up and everything to do for the little one and then you know take them back to church or you know maybe there's a fight okay husband and wife coming in and uh, disagreement on all through the way trip uh, why am i saying this it's happened to me <laughs> so you know you you go there and you step into church and you are not ready to listen to anyone sometimes even the worship leader says you know lift come on let's lift our hands and you're like no bro not today <laughs> today it's not happening you know so people come with different frames of uh, you know different mindsets uh, they've gone through different experiences high low whatever and they are there and uh, this time of worship really you know that's why that invitation you know which is inviting people into god's presence they're slowly you know making their step they're taking their step and they're saying okay god you know i see this i see this i hear this and each song is opening a window out and we are just you know uh, calling them say hey can you just look out this window can you just look at this view there can you see that mountain can you just see that sunrise and look out this window can you see the trees you know we just every song is like opening a window and giving a perspective about god and and then they're like wow i i never saw this you know i in all my struggles i never saw this aspect about god and it, and, and their heart is you know going yeah i agree i know god is beautiful i know yeah uh, even when i was doing this uh, and this is what happened and the heart is softened and they come to a place of saying oh god okay god you speak i'm i'm here to receive god i i i want to you know i want to take a hold of you right because you've taken a hold of me and i want to receive that truth uh, and and then faith rises up and so it provides the atmosphere for the ministry of the word Okay, so the minister comes to share the word. People's hearts are ready to receive, and that happens, you know, uh, when we have a good time of uh, uh, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, right? So, um, so it's a preparation time. Uh, it provides the atmosphere. It is also a, uh, you know, I must say that it is also a preparatory time for the minister who's preaching, right? Uh, not only for those who are going to hear, but also for the one who is. uh going to preach the word you know the minister also goes through a lot of challenges right a lot of struggles um physically emotionally you know a lot of things on their mind um the, the you know the the devil is also bringing in a lot of things attacking you know bringing in a lot of thoughts saying hey you know you did this and you're standing here and you're going to take the mic you're going to the podium you hypocrite right and they are also being prepared they are also being built up in faith okay you see the importance of corporate worship the importance of you know us as ministers of god uh, and worship ministers you know facilitating that right so it works in all ways in in all these ways and even the minister is prepared god is speaking god is releasing a you know a prophet maybe he's been asking lord what i what should i start off with or you know god how should i finish and god you know god speaks and he receives that you know so many times it has happened right and is struggling and saying god the, i don't know how to finish this thing you know i i don't know maybe this particular thing god and god is giving revelation god is giving um, understanding uh, during that time right so corporate worship prepares our hearts and provides an atmosphere for preaching the word okay corporate worship also uh, facilitates or helps us to express the feelings of our heart in uninhibited worship Unhin- uninhibited meaning you know without holding back without restraining it helps us to express our god so express our heart sorry so we are all together and we uh, we are we are able to open our hearts open our mouths and declare to god you know whether it's um, an expression of uh, you know militant exuberant praise you know we are able to just declare and speak it out and declare it with everyone whether it's you know repentance and you know you you want to just cry out it it helps us to do that by right? coming to a place of doing that and maybe um, you know uh, all this you know whether it's praise or whether it's repentance or whether it's you know adoration for god um we might do it alone but we sometimes we don't 
right? And um, uh, and when we are there, it's like everybody's sharpening each other. It's like the coal is, you know, you're putting the coal that is almost out of fire, you're putting it closer to the fire and that's also, you know, catching fire and burning, right? And you see, and sometimes um, you see somebody worshiping and, uh, and you, you know, your, your heart is so, your heart is so broken because you know that person, you know, you know what they have gone through and here they are, you know, just giving their all to God and, and just worshiping God. And many times, you know, as a person who's leading from stage, um, uh, I just see that and I just, I just choke up, you know, I'm not able to sing. And I'm glad there are others to, you know, sing and, um, you know, we, we're able to uh, you know, go through that song sometimes. You, know, you see that person, you see that, you know, um, uh, uh, that elderly person, you know, you know their life and you know what, whatever challenges they're facing. And here they are just worshiping God, here they are just loving God, right? And, and it, does something to you, you are, you know, stirred up again. You are stirred up to adore God. You see that and the Lord draws you closer. You know, and so wh whatever expression of worship it is, you know, it could be adoration uh, and, and in worship, and it could be, uh, it could be praise and, and declaration of who he is. Uh, it could be uh, thanksgiving, right? Um, and it could be deep conviction and repentance. Um, so it helps us to express the feelings of our heart. Now, the question is, you know, why is it important to express the feeling of our heart? Right? Many times things are locked up. Right? We don't know that it's even there. Now, there are hurts that are locked up. And, uh, you know, like in typically in our culture, you know, like, come on, be a man, be a man, you know. Hold that, you know, um, put it there. It's okay, that pain, just, just come on, be a man and just go forward with it. So there are a lot of things that are there. Okay, there are a lot of maybe regrets, hurts, disappointments, um, things that are there. And uh, not even just, not just hurts and pains, but other things, you know, maybe that's excitement and you know, all that is there. But in corporate worship, we are able to express freely. And it's important that we are able to express freely, freely uh, what is in our heart, right? whether it's to him, you know, whether it's to that mountain, whether it's to that wall which is there. You know, you know, you need to maybe shout out, shout out and say, "Mountain, you will come down." Shout out and say, "Wall, you will come down." You are able to do that. You know, you, you may not shout. You may you may not shout as a, as an individual, but here we are with the fellow army, and then you shout out, right? And you declare, so you, ex you are able to express um, freely the um, what's in our heart, okay? So, um, yeah, so I, I guess we'll, we'll kind of uh, stop here, maybe um, take a few minutes. Uh, Roshan, you want to share something or uh, any questions? We can spend this time uh, before moving further. So the ne next part is, you know, how do we do that? You know, we we know that we want to do this, but you know, how do we actually you know, do that as a congregation? Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you, Pastor. Uh, I don't have anything. I was just reminded of this one verse, uh, Hebrews uh, ten twenty five. It says, "Don't neglect uh, of coming together." Um, uh, and I think in coming together corporately, uh, you know, as a congregation, as a community, it also to speak something about God as a Trinity is they function together, you know, um, as one, but three different heads, you know, God heads. Uh, and I think uh, this, there's something powerful that happens is something uh, that God tries to show off when we come together, uh, you know, uh, as a, as a congregation. Uh, so, yeah. Um, thank you once again for reiterating that. It's just, it's just beautiful. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, so any one of you, uh, maybe you want to share your uh, thoughts or experiences, um, you know, what you experience in corporate worship, I think that'll be, um, Dave, you want to say something, um, Kiran, Kanan, Sid, Prince. It's, uh, is it deep repentance and conviction? 
<laughs> okay, Dev, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> you just unmuted your mic. Go ahead. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, it's uh, um, uh, the corporate worship is um, uh, like <laughs> uh, to a different level, I think. Um, yeah, because we all can come together, um, be one in spirit, uh, and 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 worship God. Uh, well, a personal worship is also uh, worship, but, but when we come together, there's, uh, you can feel a different um, kind of um, uh, the the work of the spirit. Uh, is uh, in a different level. That's what right. I can say, uh, say about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so true. Yeah. Uh, it's very important. Personal worship is, of course, invaluable, foundational, importance and, uh, important, and uh, and uh, as worship ministers, uh, it's always from that overflow of that personal worship that we minister, you know, corporately. Uh, but like you said, you know, corporately uh, for a church, um, corporate worship takes us further deeper into the things of god like like nothing else can now, i remember you know here at abc um, like we had uh, two seasons of 40 days of worship and prayer you know it was called 40 days of worship so the church would just um, you know, a few people would come because of the you know daily um, thing um, busyness of life and all that those days we didn't have live streaming so we couldn't do that also but anyway uh, uh, people would gather um, so we did that in i think twice a year i'm uh, sorry um, uh, uh, we did that twice right um, um, and then uh, we realized that that actually triggered something now that was a turning point uh, for the for the church 40 days uh, just gathering worship uh, followed by prayer and that's it nothing else to us um, just worship followed by prayer go back maybe pray for people's needs etc and the lord did something uh in the lives of the congregation the lord killed something uh, in, in, the life, in the life of the church and the lord brought to life you know something so there was a deeper hunger level deeper understanding of the presence of god um and uh, you know uh, and and uh, an openness towards the to the towards the supernatural work of god you know saying that hey, i i want an encounter with god uh, i don't want to just you know the, just the theory but i i just want the experience so so um no amount of theory could have done that right so it was just the, the, the encounter with him um and uh yeah it was it was great and and like from that of course we have this five days of prayer uh just waiting on god and praying together and so on yeah so invaluable you know, what what this can do so you know maybe you uh, maybe you you know you at some point in life you you get to plant a church or you're already serving in a church and uh, you know it'll be it'll be uh, great to bring in that right that aspect to the ministry team or to the church or um, you know it'll take uh, the team or the church deeper and further in god uh, than nothing else can right uh, you can't explain it you can't teach it and uh, i'm sure you know roshan also shared many times about uh, you know the, the times of worship and um, and and you're marked for life you know you you remember that you know remember what god did and and it's so deeply ingrained uh, uh, in your in your spirit that you know that it is god and uh, several things happened you know for me it is uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of cleansing a lot of uh, reset you know, reboot. Uh, sometimes, you know, the laptop, you just have to shut down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nothing is happening, you know, all scans, virus scan, this, this. So that's uh, recently it happened, you know, uh, I think the cursor is not moving at all. It just screen is frozen. Sometimes it's, it's just, you just need a reset. You just need a reboot. And that's what corporate worship does, you know, set things yeah. in, uh, in order again. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, take a break yeah. or yeah. yes pastor so, yeah i'll stop the recording now for this session and uh, we'll take a quick 10 minutes break and we'll be back for the second session okay, okay. all right see you guys 10 minutes